Well, hey, everyone, and welcome to Journey Church Online. I'm Matt. I'm your online host today, and I'm so glad you're with us. We are in week two of our series called I Survived 2020, and this year has been like a dumpster fire, right? It's left us feeling stuck, we're uncertain, and, but even in the middle of all of the craziness of this year, we want to move from just surviving to actually thriving even in the chaos. So I think God has something great in store for you today. So I'm so glad that you're here. And if, if you're kind of new to the Journey Church Online, I want to encourage you to check out some first steps. You'll see it along with this experience today. And there's some opportunities to take some initial steps to get moving. And I encourage you to check out the, the guest card. You can fill that out and we will just follow up with you just to encourage you. We won't harass you or anything like that. We just want to do whatever we can to encourage you. You'll find the connect card where you can put in prayer requests or, or request more information. I want to encourage you to invite someone to join you today. And there's also an opportunity to like, follow, and subscribe all of our uh, social media sites to stay connected on all things for the Journey Church Online. So those are some great first steps I want to encourage you to take. And as we begin today, we do this every week. We, we take some time to turn our focus towards God, and the band leads us in some songs where we can do that, where we can worship Him and turn our focus towards Him and sing to Him. And, and so as we do that, I want to encourage you just to use that time really just to kind of push all of the craziness of this week, this weekend, the election, all that kind of stuff. Just kind of push that out of our minds and to turn our focus towards God. Maybe you're at home as you're watching and you're doing laundry or washing dishes or something like that. Again, just kind of put all those things on pause and let's really just take this time to turn our hearts towards God this morning. So I'm going to pray for us as we begin today. God, we just pray. And we, we think of this promise in your word that says, if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. And so we want that today, God. Draw near. We need you. We want to experience you. Meet with us today. Speak to our hearts. We turn our hearts and our focus towards you right now. We pray in your name. Amen. Well, let's join the band and use this time to turn our focus towards God. Again, just sing along if you want or focus on those words. And let's just use this time to really focus in on God and his greatness and his love for us and what he has in store for us today.
resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting love that song, the idea that God wants to resurrect our lives, that God is this God who can take things that are dead or stuck or dying and bring new life, and he wants to do that for you as well. And that goes right along with our series. We have something that we're doing to encourage you to experience that new life, to experience some forward movement. We have the survival guide to go along with our series. You can find it on our blog, and it has things for this week ahead. It has Bible reading plans. It has questions to follow up. It has some extra thoughts. It has extra resources. It has something for this whole week for you to, to create some forward movement, to experience some of that new life that God wants for us. And so I want to encourage you to check that out. Um, that goes along with today. Braden's going to share with us in just a minute. And then all that stuff that you'll find in the survival will go right along with what we're talking about today to keep taking those steps. Again, you can find that on the blog. The blog has all other kinds of resources that will be helpful for you. We have a special post every week. It's called This Week for Church Online. And it has everything for follow-up for today and for the week ahead. So I encourage you to check that out as well. And right now, too, is our chance to give. We give as an act of worship, and so I just want to thank you for your generosity and how we are able to spread kindness and share hope and encourage other people to follow Jesus along the lake shore and around this world because of your generosity. You can give right now by texting the word Journey Donate to 77977, or you can go right to our website on the donate page there as well. So again, let's just look today how we can move from just surviving. We don't want to do that. We want to thrive, even in the chaos. And so let's look for some insight for God today as Braden shares with us. But before he does, we got one more special thing for you. Here's a song that can help us as we're thinking about surviving 2020. And Aaron has a special song for us right now. Check this out. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. You can craft one really fast. Tie a scarf around your neck, that's what the CDC has asked. Get some cloth, rubber bands, or sew on your own by hand. It will help you be protected so that you don't get infected. And when you're at the store and there's a woman in aisle four who keeps 
scoffing on the broccoli floats. Go on and keep your distance and in this key instance, wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a mask. So what exactly has gone right in 2020? Like in the midst of all this chaos and uncertainty, we know that there's been so much going wrong, it feels like. But in spite of everything happening in our world, here at The Journey this month, we're trying to take a glass half full look as we finish out the year to, to counter blessings, to see how we can thrive in our relationship and not just survive. And I don't know if you've been paying attention to the news this past week, but we had this little thing called an election. And I think for some of us, we were feeling like we'd hopefully get some clarity on the direction of our country and hopefully we just move beyond all this. And yet, what happens in 2020, right? This election just proves to be just as chaotic and uncertain as everything else that has come our way this year. The glass might be half full, like when we think about it, we're so grateful to still live in a country where we can vote for our candidates. We have the freedoms to choose the people that will lead our country. But when we think about that glass half full of water this week, doesn't it kind of feel like a glass that might be half full, but is like upside down on the table and you're like, what am I supposed to do with this glass now? I've been texting with friends this week and I have friends across the political spectrum that have just said they are so anxious this past week as we kind of wait the final results of this election and the uncertainty is getting to everybody. Even in the midst of something we hoped would bring some clarity in the midst of all this, we're, we're, we're experiencing this anxiety and this uncertainty in our world. Well, I want to just say thanks for joining us online this morning. My name is Braden. I'm the campus pastor at our Northside location, and we're in this series called Surviving 2020, where despite everything that's going on in our world, we believe we're going to get through this uh, together. And even though it's only November and we have a long ways to go, we want to take some steps, not to just, to, just to be in survival mode, but to actually thrive in our relationships with Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of ready to put all this political stuff behind me for a while. And the truth is, it, it really seems like it might be weeks before we know the final answers, but I'm just tired of all this stuff. Like you think about it, the politics, the ads, the arguments, all this stuff, it's been on TV, it's been online on Facebook and other social media platforms, it's in, been in people's yards, it's been the center of so many different conversations with friends and family throughout all this. There's the trucks with the big flags driving around and so much of it, I'm like, can we just move beyond all this stuff? I think we're all just kind of fatigued and tired. I don't know about you, but I've been finding actually pretty hard to focus these last several weeks and months as we try to figure out our way through all the uncertainty and all the really confusion and chaos in our world, different kinds of regulations, different kinds of ideas about What's going to happen? Trying to figure out things for my family. Are my kids going back to school? Are they going to be home for a while? Even some job uncertainty, like what's my job going to look like this week? What's required of me? There's just been so much going on, the, the political noise of this season. And it's been hard for me just to focus. You see, we, we, we look at the book of Hebrews and it's written to the Jewish people back in the day that were, that were finally coming to grasp the idea that Jesus was the one that they had been longing for for hundreds of years, for generation upon generation. They had been looking for this Messiah, this Savior that would come. And the book of Hebrews is written to them, making this case that Jesus is that Messiah, that Savior that they have been looking for and longing for. And why they can trust Jesus and his goodness, that he's the one that God ultimately finally provided. But if anybody throughout history, if any people group throughout human history understands struggle and suffering and uncertainty, it's the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, that from almost the very beginning of their existence have, have 
experience hardship in difficult circumstances and uncertainty as God continues to call them to himself, to trust them, to live by faith. And we see that way back in the beginning of their story as a people, that they, the Hebrew people had been living in the land of Egypt for hundreds of years in slavery and captivity under the pharaohs of Egypt. And yet through Moses and a series of miracles, God led them out of slavery. But he didn't just immediately lead them into their dreams and their hopes. Instead, he led them out into the desert, into the wilderness, where for 40 years, They had to trust him. And they were stuck in these circumstances that weren't ideal for anybody. And yet God asked them to trust him, that he would lead them, that he would guide them. And in fact, one of the ways that we see that God provided for them in those days of uncertainty, in these circumstances that were difficult, was that he provided a column of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night that would lead them, that would go in front of them, that would be before them so that they would always be reminded of God's presence, that they could focus on him even in these circumstances, that they could keep their eyes fixed on him. Exodus chapter 13 verses 21 and 22 testify to the way that God helped them focus on him. It says this, By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them and then on their way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or by night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. You think about what they were experiencing 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, having left such harsh circumstances of slavery and captivity in Egypt, but now wandering in the wilderness, all the uncertainty. Do you feel like that at times right now? That we're just kind of wandering in uncertainty? The Hebrew people knew what that was like. And think about the ways that they could get distracted, worrying about where they'd find protection, where they would find food, where they were going, when things were going to go back to normal all the different ways that they might find themselves getting distracted. And yet it says these pillars went in front of them and was always before them because no matter the circumstances, God always wants our eyes fixed on him. That even though there are all kinds of distractions for them, undoubtedly, God gave them the opportunity to focus on him, to live by faith, to trust him even in the uncertainty. And so as we look at the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, this is a reminder to those people that have been telling these stories for generation after generation of the way that God has always provided a way for them. These people that understood that God always wanted them to know that he was out in front of them, that they could fix their eyes on him, that they could trust him. The book of Hebrews is written to proclaim that Jesus is the promised one of God, the Savior that was coming. And in Hebrews chapter 11, It gives these great examples of all these people that lived by faith. That even though they couldn't see where they were going, and even sometimes they experienced incredibly difficult circumstances, they trusted God and they lived by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 says, By faith, Abraham lived a certain way. and By faith, Moses and so many other of these heroes that were heroes to the people of Israel, the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, Hebrews chapter 11 says these are the people that live by faith. And then Hebrews chapter 12, at the beginning of Hebrews chapter 12, says that we get to follow their example. We get to live like they did as well. And so that's what we're going to look is Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to look at the first few verses of the book of Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to start in verse 1. It says this in Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. This first part of this verse, it says that we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. 
There's really kind of two ideas of what it means to be a witness. One idea is that we are a witness watching something. But then there's the idea of a witness as the person that gets up in a courtroom and gives testimony to something that they had seen or experienced in their life. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, I think when it says we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, it's not this idea that there's a whole bunch of people watching us. That might even be a little weird, to be honest, if we thought about our lives that way, that a whole bunch of people are floating in the clouds watching us. Instead, it's this idea that there are all these people that are testifying to the way that God had provided in their own life, to the way that they ran their own race, that they lived by faith in their own life, and they are testifying to us. Kind of this idea that I did it and you can too. Hebrews chapter 11 is all these great heroes of the faith that lived by faith, by faith, by faith, is this key phrase we hear repeated. And then Hebrews chapter 12, the beginning of it says, there's this whole cloud of people testifying to us that it was by faith that they made it through. And it was by faith that you and I can make it through this great race on our, on our own as well. And one of the incredible pictures of the scenes painted in this too is this idea that they're waiting for us at the finish line to cheer us on, kind of saying, well done, you made it as well. That This cloud of witnesses is there saying how they made it through in their own lives, but also they're waiting for us at the end of ours as well to cheer us on. One of the things I miss most about my, my time living in Chicago uh, was in the fall, uh, every year in Chicago, they run the Chicago Marathon. didn't happen this year because of everything going on. Um, but, but on the weekend, on the, on the morning of the Chicago Marathon, like the entire city of Chicago basically shuts down. And then 40 or 50,000 people go to the starting line and, and run the marathon. Now, you might look at me, I'm like, wait, you ran the marathon? No, <laughs> you know better than that. I never ran the Chicago Marathon. And quite frankly, I don't know if I could ever make it through that. But I loved going downtown on the morning of the marathon to cheer on the people that were going. Sometimes I had friends that were in it. I just loved the experience, the quietness of that. But I loved being there to cheer on these people that are going through this grueling race and especially being there at the finish line to see them as they're making those last few steps and cheering them on, saying, you did it. And that's kind of the picture we get from Hebrews chapter 12. It's this idea that we're running this race. It's not just a sprint, but it's an endurance race. It's like a marathon that we have to keep going. We have to keep persevering through it. But at the very end, there are these people that are so excited that we made it and they're there cheering us on. But there's also the second part of Hebrews chapter 12. And I just want to look at the verse again. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. This idea of throwing off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us, those aren't the same thing. It's not just get rid of all the bad stuff in your life. It's actually get rid of all the things in your life that might be slowing you down. The weights that might be dragging you down as you're trying to to run this race. Sometimes those actually might be good or productive things in your own life. Maybe you're not maybe it's not actually just sinful things, but are just some things that are distracting you from running your race or slowing you down. Like I think one of those things in my own life as I've been going through this COVID season is I realized one of the ways that I was coping through all this is I I like some quiet time, but my kids had been at home <laughs> For what felt like years, it was weeks or months that they had been at home for virtual school and stuff like that. And I just wanted some quiet time. And so late at night, usually after everybody's in bed, I'd go, I'd go downstairs and turn on the TV and just kind of veg out. I just want to turn my mind off. I wasn't doing anything bad or anything like that. But what I found is that pattern started building in my life where it would affect the way that I was sleeping. And when I wasn't sleeping well, it meant that I didn't have the same energy for the next day to do my work and be present with my family. And it kind of built on itself. Where after a few weeks or a few months of this, I just realized I was just worn out. And I, I hadn't done, done anything bad, but I had developed this habit or this pattern in my life that was slowing me down, that was weighing me down, and it wasn't actually allowing me to run my race very well. And I wonder if there's maybe something in your own life 
that you would say that as well. Maybe it's the expectations that other people, maybe a boss or somebody in your family has placed on you that, that you're trying so hard to please them or make them happy that it's actually preventing you from running your race well because their thoughts of you or their opinion of you is actually slowing you down from becoming the person that God is calling you to be in this season. I know for so many people, Facebook has been the thing. It's just been dragging them down, right? Like, Facebook is actually kind of neutral. Like, it's what we do with Facebook, right? Facebook in itself isn't inherently evil. I know that that new uh, documentary came out. Some people might say um, that it is. But really, the idea is that even if Facebook as a tool, it's kind of neat in some ways to be able to connect with people across the world and we haven't seen in a while. But some people are finding that what they're, what they're experiencing through something like that, it's actually dragging them down and weighing them down. It's not like they're sinning, but it's slowing them down from running their own race because they're getting dragged down by what they see from other people or the, what people, other people are saying about them or to them in their own life. And then there's this idea that sometimes sin also slows us down, that it sort of entangles us in our own life, that we're actually stuck in some patterns that are actually affecting our heart and our soul and they're, they're actually preventing us from drawing close to God, from, from focusing on him because we're distracted by things that we know we should not be doing that actually do have negative impact in our lives. And we need to strip off some of those things. I don't know what that might be in your own life. I think there's all kinds of different ways that we might be tempted to, to, to fall into some bad habits throughout this COVID season. We might be stuck in some patterns in our own life that really, it's not that they're just not good for us. They're actually causing harm to us and our own hearts and our own souls. And maybe there's some things that we need to take some steps on in our own life to, to get rid of some of those sin patterns and habits in our own lives. We need to throw these things off because they're slowing us down. It's like the idea you don't want to run a marathon with a big, with a big hiking backpack and big boots and a big coat on. You want to be as efficient as possible, as light as possible, so that you can persevere to the very end. And that's the encouragement, is that as we fix our eyes on Jesus, we can persevere and we can get rid of all the things that are slowing us down and running our race. And we can realize that the, the course is marked out for us. These heroes have gone before us. They're waiting for us at the end. They're testifying that they've gotten through it and we can get through it too. And so we go. We strip off the things that might slow us down or entangle us to trip us up and we move forward. Hebrews chapter 2 encourages us to fix our eyes on Jesus. He says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, Jesus came, even though he had this place at the finish line in heaven, he left that place of comfort and that place of glory and became like us. He knew the race that would be marked out ahead of him. When he first came to earth as a baby, he knew what the finish line would look like for him. But because of him, because of the example that he set in our own life, because of the way that he demonstrated his own life for us, we can see the finish line too in our own lives as we focus not on our circumstances, not on everything going around in our world, but as we fix our eyes on Jesus. We can say Jesus got through this and we can get through this on our own as well. It's not that we see everything that will happen in the days and the weeks and the months and the years to come in our life, but we can see by faith what happens when we focus our eyes on Jesus and we run the race fixed on him. Not everything else going on, on in our world. We can see the finish line in our world. The course has been set. The weights, the, the sins, the things that weigh us down have been stripped off. And we're running the race. But we're not looking all around. We're not looking down at our feet, just moving day by day. We're looking forward. We're looking ahead. Maybe you'd say we're looking up to Jesus, the one who has demonstrated the way to go through this. Because Jesus understood suffering and Jesus understood uncertainty and difficult circumstances and yet he persevered through it all. And so when we feel like we're going through our own struggles, our own uncertainty, our own difficult circumstances, 
Jesus has been there. And he showed the way through for us. And what it tells us is that Jesus is both the one that wrote our faith, he's the author of our faith, but he also perfected our faith. He completed our faith. So Jesus is the one that created the opportunity for you and I to live by faith. He demonstrated the way to live by faith, but he's also the one that completes our faith. He's the one that, that gives us the ultimate reward because of our faith. We can live that way as we fix our eyes on Jesus. We don't just have to feel like we're surviving. We can thrive as we fix our eyes on Jesus and not the circumstances around us. And then Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, the, the last verse we're going to look at today, says this, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus didn't get caught up in the circumstances. He had people that were trying to stop him. He had incredibly difficult circumstances and experiences in his own life. But he didn't let any of that get in his way. He persevered. He endured. He realizes, realized it wasn't just a sprint. It was a marathon. And he kept pushing forward. And because Jesus did, we can too. We can think about Jesus. We can think about his own challenges and his own sufferings and realize Jesus got through so much more. He understands what we're going through. We can get through it too as we fix our eyes on him, as we consider him and realize that he showed us the way through it. When we fix our eyes on Jesus instead of our circumstances, this place where we might feel stuck or frustrated can be Come a place of transformation in our lives. That we're not distracted by everything going on around. Instead, we're focused on Jesus, running the race that's ahead of us, and being transformed by him into his own likeness as we take our steps, little by little, forward. That it's not just a sprint, that it's an endurance race. It's like a marathon. We just have to keep going, putting one foot in front of the other, not just giving up or quitting or stopping in the middle of the way. Just say, let's keep going. It's time to focus. It's time to focus on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Don't focus on your circumstances. Focus and fix your eyes on Jesus in the midst of all this. I think this might play out in a few different ways. Maybe you're like me and you're kind of a procrastinator. Uh, like you kind of wait till the last minute to get everything done. And sometimes you almost need that crunch time energy to help you get things done. Well, it's November 2020. And maybe you feel like you've been putting things off and you've just kind of been stuck and you've been waiting for that crunch time energy. We're almost at the end. It's time to focus. It's time to really buckle down and, and take some steps, not to just to survive, but to th thrive as we finish out this year. Maybe you're more like the steady eddy kind of person that you just keep going no matter what. You're always just kind of trying to make some progress and get some things done in your own life. And maybe you feel like you've been trying to hold fast throughout all this, but you're just tired. After months and months and months of all the uncertainty, you just, you've been trying to keep going, but you're just tired. Maybe you need some renewed focus in your life to be reminded and encouraged that there's still so much more to go. We can't do it on our own, but Jesus is there to help us. He understands what we're going through. And he says, focus on him and we'll get through this together. Maybe you're the optimist. I know some people in my life like this, at the very beginning of the lockdowns and all this COVID stuff, they were like, you know what, it's, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. And maybe the optimist that feels like you had some energy and you had some excitement at the beginning of all this, and now you really just feel drained. Like, like, I tried to keep up a positive attitude. I tried to think that the election would finally give us some clarity and some outcome. I, I felt like we were, we were making some progress and you're sitting there and you're just feeling drained yourself. If you're the optimist kind of person, maybe it's time to refocus. Maybe you've gotten distracted and drained by all the things going on in the world. But there is so much reason to hope. It says, for the joy set before him, that Jesus allows us to run this race. He ran this race 
himself. And think about the joy that is to come for those who persevere in this endurance race, this marathon of faith. The joy that is the embrace of Jesus someday. The joy that is ahead as those cloud of witnesses is at the finish line cheering us up. Think about that. And maybe it's an opportunity for you to refocus. Look, we're not naive here at the journey. We know that there is so much uncertainty and so many difficulties that have impacted each and every one of us in different ways throughout all this. And we don't expect everybody to just be doing great and saying everything's fine and we'll be fine through all this. There are so many different ways that we've all been affected in these last few weeks and months. In so many ways, we feel stuck in survival mode. But we want to encourage you to take some steps to thrive and not just survive. And one of the ways we've done that is by creating this survival guide that all month long, we want to help you take some steps. And in this week, we want to help you take some small steps to focus, to fix your eyes on Jesus. And there's several different examples. I'd encourage you to open that survival guide and you can follow along with the different rhythms and the different suggestions we have for the days of the week this week for how we can take some steps from moving from just survival to thriving in our own relationships. Another friend of mine, I texted this week, simple text message. I just said, so who won? <laughs> and I loved his response to me. My friend Michael is a mentor to me. He's a godly man. He's an encourager. I know he's praying for me and our church on our regular basis. And this was his response to me when I asked him who won. His text message just said, I, no idea. I haven't looked at the news for days. My focus is on the God who is on his throne, who I am counting on to continue to be faithful and guide and direct me in the years ahead. Glad that again today he is on the throne. I think maybe we could all take a cue from Michael. Let's fix our eyes on the God who is still on the throne rather than worrying about election outcomes or all the other circumstances going on our, in our world. I know that 2020 seems like the longest year ever, and the truth is we're still pretty far from the end. But 2020 is a reminder to each of us that this life of faith is a marathon and not a sprint. Like chapter 12 of Hebrews reminds us we need to run this race with endurance. We need to run it well by throwing off the things that hinder us and entangle us, the things that slow us down in our own lives, by fixing our eyes on Jesus and not giving up. We're going to get through this, but it's better focused on the things that matter most rather than the circumstances going on all around us. When we do, when we fix and we focus our eyes on Jesus, we find the strength and the courage and the stamina to keep moving forward in our faith towards that ultimate victory that those heroes, those cloud of witnesses are waiting to welcome us into. When our eyes are fixed on Jesus, we can thrive, not just survive. So let's not stay stuck this week. Let's take some steps. And oh, by the way, I just want to give you one other practical word of advice. If you've ever find yourself in this situation um, where your cup that is half full is turned upside down on the table and you're not really sure what to do, there's a way to solve this problem. My dad used to do this as a trick to our servers. I guess he thought it was funny to put the tip in the cup underneath there, like the $10 bill or $20 bill, I guess just to see what they would do in the situation. But there is a practical solution to this. And what you do is you just get out a, a little card, in this case, happen to have a Journey Church card laying around, and you just take a thin little card like this and you just slip it under the edge of the glass, do the best you can. See, I'm still not very good at this. Slip it under the edge of the glass and then roll the glass on it. Once you get the card under the glass, just take it to the edge of the table, get your hand under there, flip it over, and what you'll find is what seemed like a precarious half empty glass of water actually turns out to be more than half full. Just like when we fix our eyes on Jesus, what might be precarious, seemingly half empty situation, when our eyes are fixed on him, are more than we even thought they could be. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for 
um, your goodness in spite of our circumstances. God, it's so easy to get distracted, especially in this season. It's hard to focus because we all live with this sort of sense of anxiety and uncertainty. And yet we thank you that you've given us so many examples of people who have faithfully gone before us and run their own races with perseverance and endurance that they've stripped off the things that held them back and they completed the race that you put out before them. And God, we each have our own race ahead of us. Our circumstances might be different, but God, you've reminded us not to get distracted by all those things, but instead to fix our eyes on Jesus. And when we do, when we focus on him, instead of our circumstances, we can complete the race ahead of us. God, we know that 2020 is full of uncertainty, but we don't just have to stay stuck in survival mode. We can actually thrive and allow our faith to grow in the midst of all the chaos and uncertainty as we trust you to be the one that gets us through the difficulties, as we are reminded that Jesus has shown us the way through and we fix our eyes on him, God. We love you and we thank you for who you are. Amen. Well, thanks so much for sharing today, Braden. And man, what a great idea that, that our circumstances, man, they're gonna be up and down and circumstances are just bad right now. But that's not where our hope is. Our hope is in Jesus. So let's fix our eyes on him, not on our circumstances. Let's fix our eyes on him. And some ways we can do that this week, if you check out that survival guide, and it's on the blog and it will guide you through this week ahead and will give you a lot of great opportunities. It'll give you some insight. It'll give you a guide to help you take some steps to fix your eyes on Jesus so that you can not just survive, but you can thrive even in the chaos. So make sure you check out the survival guide for this week as it will help all of us keep taking steps to move forward, to not be stuck in just the survival mode, but to actually thrive. I wanna encourage you too, if you have kids, right now is a great time just to pull the kids together and do Sundays at home. You can find the link for all of our Journey Kids resources and parent tools and the videos they would normally watch. And you can find those right on the blog as well. And I, I encourage you again, man, parents, just, just to set a, a special time. Maybe it's Sundays after you watch uh, and participate with Church Online. Maybe Sundays right after that, you pull the kids together, but have a set time because, because they're talking about some important things too. Like all this month, they're talking about gratitude, which can help us thrive even in the chaos. And, and so who doesn't want their kid to be more thankful, right? And so, so they're talking about gratitude all this month. So check out those kids' resources from our Journey Kids. They're again, all right on the blog, along with the survival guide. And you can find all those things for a special post we call This Week for Church Online. Again, I'm so glad that you were with us today. I hope that this week that you experience God in a new way as you fix your eyes on him, that you don't let your circumstances dictate your life, but you put your hope in the God who is greater than all the circumstances that we're going to face. This week, I hope you follow Jesus, spread kindness, share hope. Remember, we're better together. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you online this week and back here next Sunday for week three of I Survive 2020. Have a great week, everybody.